All right, so in the laboratory part of your organismal biology class, you're going to have to do a series of experiments, and some of these experiments are going to require you to uh, get the organisms uh, for the experiment or some of the materials for the experiment. And so the very first thing you're going to need to get, and you should get this, you know, if you can, get this even before the class starts uh, next week, that would be great. Um, but you need to get it immediately, really right in the start, is uh, seeds. Okay, so not very expensive. This one here is $1.89. And radish is going to be one of the best because radish are going to germinate really fast. Last semester, we had the radish germinating about three days in the lab. Why is that important? It's because you're going to have to set up experiments and the result is going to then lead to a next, another experiment. And if it takes a long time for the first one to end, you're going to have to wait a long time to begin the next one. And our class is very short, so you're going to just run out of time. Okay, so some of these experiments uh, take place over, say, six weeks or longer a time, but the class is only five weeks. So how is that going to work? It's because they're going to be overlapping each other. So instead of like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks uh, of, of experiments, it's going to be, you know, in this two-week block, you're going to start an experiment and then start another experiment a few days later, a different experiment. And then a few days after that, you'll start something else. So you're going to have multiple things going at the same time. Uh, there's some advantages of doing this uh, the way it's that you're going to do it over the way it's done in the classroom during the semester because students come in once a week for a lab. And when you're working with organisms, when you're trying to water some type of plant or feed an animal, if you only come in once a week, the things are going to die. Uh, it, it's not going to be a very good experiment. Uh, or you're going to have to come in every single day uh, for several weeks to, to do that experiment. And that's not always realistic. Uh, and so students don't do it and the things don't work out. So doing this at home is actually going to turn out to be a little bit better in the end for uh, the overall results that we're going to get from the experiment and for your experience because a more realistic research experience is not a once a week thing. It's an everyday sort of thing that you're going to do. So the first thing is, is going to be plant germination. I have a separate video explaining how to set that up, but you're going to need to get plant seeds. Radish is going to be the primary one. Pepper and uh, pumpkin are also really good uh, for one of the, the second germination experiment you're going to do called Darwin seeds. Okay, so the, the first one essentially involved taking one type of seed, putting seeds in a Ziploc bag with a little piece of paper. So you're going to have like pieces of uh, paper towel, put them into a Ziploc bag, put the seeds into the bag, and then you're going to add you know water to some of the bags or not going to add water. It's going to be an experiment. You can set up a whole variety of different sorts of things. While that's happening, I'm recommending to you the first during the first week, get a larger bag, a little bit bigger bag with a bigger paper towel in it. Um, towel in, put some water in the bag so the paper towel is wet. So it doesn't have to be a, a puddle of water in it, just so it's all completely wet. Right? And then uh, you should add about 30 seeds, 30, 30, 30 seeds to that bag. Uh, that's going to be set aside for your plant growth experiment. Just like two experiments away. But the thing is, for that experiment, you're going to need little plants to then treat uh, under different... You're going to choose. It's going to be different lighting conditions or different temperature conditions or different watering conditions or you're going to add a nutrient to them or not. Or You're going to have at least two groups of plants and you're going to have hopefully at least 10 plants in each group. That means you're going to need 20 plants for this. So where are those plants going to be? They're going to be growing in little Dixie cups like this. So very inexpensive, uh, biodegradable, compostable um, cups and inexpensive. Okay, You're going to need a little bit of soil, so you have to buy a small bag of potting soil. And so this is to get that set up. It's like the third experiment. But if you don't get it going the first week, if you don't have those little seeds going and you wait to get this started until three weeks in, you're going to have to wait almost a week just to get your baby plants to grow from seed to plant before you can even begin that experiment. So you're going to have this huge delay in getting it started. Just putting a seed in the soil isn't going to work because, again, it could be three days, five days before it even germinates. Then the growth experiment starts. So you need to have them germinated first. So that's why I say as you're doing the germination experiments, which is like, does the plant emerge from the seed? you should just get some plants germinating. And to do that, you're gonna just throw them in a bag with uh, water and, and the paper towel and do a whole bunch of them, like I said, about 30 of them, and then you'll have enough to do the experiment with. So, for the very first experiment, you need one type of seed, little Ziploc bag, some water, and some paper towels, very simple. 
For the second one, you would need those seeds plus maybe two more species of plant, because now we're going to compare different species. And then you're going to have uh, water that we're going to add salt to. I'll give you specific directions on how much salt to add in just teaspoons, so it's easy to measure at home. And you're going to make up salt water. And the idea is we're going to put some of the seeds into salt water, and then some of the seeds into fresh water. Just let them sit there for 24 hours. Then you're going to take them out of the seeds and put them into uh, little bags with paper towels and water, and then see if they germinate. The idea is to see if exposure to salt water harms their ability to germinate. And this idea uh, is, can plants from, say, one continent go move through the ocean through currents and then land on another shore and then grow? Would, would floating in the ocean kill them? Would the salt water exposure kill them or not? You know, so, or a new island forms in the ocean, how do plants get to that island? How do they colonize it? So they, where, how do the seeds get there? So uh, that's kind of the idea. And some species it may work for, some species may not. That's why we're going to use a couple different species. And then the third plant growth experiment one is, is growth. So you're going to actually have little plants and they're going to be growing. You're going to be measuring how, how much they grow or counting how many leaves they have, that sort of thing. And to do that experiment, you need plants to start with, not just the seeds. So that's why you're going to start the growth. So those are the first three experiments you're doing are with plants plant germination, effective salt concentration on germination, and then growth of a plant. The next experiment you're going to do, and so, you're going to have to start this also while the plants are going. So some days all you're going to do is be watering a plant, seeing if it goes, or maybe when you're doing the germination experiment, once it's all set up, you just got to check it and see like, this one, no, 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 oh, this one's germinated. And then you have to write it down in your notebook and, and keep track of that over time to collect your data. You know, collect the data for a period of time, about two weeks of time. Um, but meanwhile, there's going to be another experiment set up and something else going on. So the next experiment we're going to do now is going to involve animals. It's organismal biology, so we're going to try to plant an animal. Um, and in this particular case, we're going to use wild birds. Uh, and uh, I don't have any flying around behind me right now, so I'm hoping maybe to, to show up to you. You're going to need to buy some seed. Each of these bags cost me about $7. You might be able to um, get something even cheaper than that. That's not too bad if afterward you don't want to feed birds and you could donate the seeds to someone else. You could donate them to the school, to uh, um, preschool or somewhere that, that sets up bird feeders for uh, kids or nature center, Audubon Society, anything like that. We really need two different types of seeds. So this one says cardinal blend and this one said, says finch blend. So that's kind of the experiment, kind of questionable. Like, is that true? We're going to find lots of cardinals here and lots of finches here. Will no finches come to this and no cardinals come to that? I don't know. What about other types of birds? That's going to be the experiment. It's going to be broken into two parts. But to do it, you're going to need a bird feeder. And bird feeders can be expensive, so I'm not going to have you buy one. If you have bird feeders and you have two bird feeders that are the same type, then you could just go ahead and do this experiment. If you don't and you want to get bird feeders, go, you can go ahead and, and do that. I have been making 60 bird feeders, uh, 3D printing them. So I've been 3D printing a, a base like this. See here. Uh, and then these are little perches, you can see this, and then the perch I will I glue to the base like this, kind of see like that. And so the ones you're going to get are going to be all different colors because I keep kept running out and have to buy more uh, printer film and more printer film. I'll glue these together and so you're going to have to come to the college to pick this up. Um, these are going to be too difficult and like very expensive to mail, just probably as expensive as going out and buying a bird feeder. So um, it's going to be at least 10 to $12 just to mail this to you. So, um, but go out and buy it, um, or sorry, go pick it up from the college uh, when I tell you. Don't just come right now because they're not, they're not already yet. I'm still working on them. But you're going to get a base like this, and you're going to get uh, little hooks like this. I'll show you what to do. And then you're going to need to provide your own little just soda bottles or water bottles or whatever. And then the, uh, the bottle can screw on to this. Now, obviously, first you have to put seed into it. So you'll get your seed. You'll pour it in here if you have a funnel. That'd be great. Uh, if not, just get a, a piece of paper and then roll it and kind of make a funnel out of a piece of paper. It's going to be the best uh, probably solution for you. If you try using your hand, I tried doing it uh, earlier and it, it makes a huge mess. It's just going to spill all over the place. All right, so um, make some kind of funnel. Just a paper funnel is going to be great if you don't have a plastic funnel, like a kitchen funnel, something like that. So you put the seed in here. You'll screw this on. There's going to be a little one of these. You're gonna have to super glue. So this is the super glue I use. If you can get it, um, it's a Loctite Professional um, liquid super glue. 
it's very strong. I use it on projects that this is the type that doesn't fail and it sets really fast. Others take a long time and then they tend to fail. Um, and I make a lot of different things, especially that I 3D print. So you've been gluing this to the top and then it hangs. This is one I just made. Uh, you can see it's hanging out there from a tree. Hopefully you can see that, I don't know. Uh, but there's one out there hanging from a tree and some birds have been feeding on it today. So it, it works. Um, the idea is you're gonna have two of these feeders set up. One is gonna have one type of seed. One is gonna have the other type of seed. In the first experiment, you're just gonna count birds, just any any kind of bird that comes to one feeder versus the other and score them. So you're gonna have to set a time, or actually I prefer you're gonna set up multiple times during the day, some early in the day and some later in the day, where you're gonna watch that those two feeders for at least a period of 15 minutes. And do, uh, longer is better, but at least 15 minutes and twice a day. And you're gonna score how many go to one feeder versus the other. So maybe only two birds go to one and 10 birds go to the other, or, or 15 birds go to both feeders during that time period. Doesn't matter. While that's happening, you're gonna be starting to learn to identify the birds. Because maybe right now you don't know the difference between a black-capped chickadee and a white-breasted nuthatch, but you're gonna to need to identify them for the second experiment. So in the first experiment is just gonna be birds. Then you're going to kind of repeat the experiment over again, but this time you're going to be scoring the experiment based on the species. So I'm going to give you some resources and some videos on identifying some of the bird species. This will be something you'll kind of be doing right to the very end of the class. So it's not, don't have to worry about this right at the very beginning. This is the, kind of like in the fourth week. So after about the first month is over, this is when this will be happening, okay, like right up toward the end of the course. Um, but you need to be getting things going. So you need to kind of be getting the bird seed set up, eventually get the feeders set up and have a place for them to figure out how or where, so for some of you it's gonna be really easy to do and for some of you it might be a challenge to figure out how or where you're gonna actually do this. But this is a, a organismal biology class. We study organisms. We, in some classes, people just look at slides of dead things. So um, some people have called a, traditional classes at other places like this, biology in a jar, because all you do is look at dead stuff on jars and slides. That's not really biology, because it's a study of life, and that's all dead things, right? So, but it is a study of sometimes comparative structures of organisms which are preserved, but a lot of that can be done actually through online research. So there are gonna be online worksheets and all to look at images, which are the same exact thing you would see in the lab, and many, sometimes some of those images and resources are incredibly good. So. That'll be part of it that you can do, which is the kind of traditional sense. But in, in more modern times, people have really focused on this course as being a research methods course, learning the scientific method with organismal biology. So studying organisms. And so you're gonna have to go out and study actual organisms. There is another project that's optional in the class, and that's making a documentary. So that is that instead of, there are gonna be five worksheets to do in the lab, Sorry, there are going to be 10 worksheets to do in the lab. The first five you have to do, they're, they're related to the first, first exam, things like meiosis and Mendelian genetics and population genetics and cladistics and making a cladogram, things like that. We do some of those things in lab with hands-on and, and we do go through problems and it's related to lecture. So all that kind of stuff goes together. The other five worksheets are more finding structures and identifying and labeling structures. And so, that, that's going to be, those are going to be optional. And in place of those, you can do a focus project on one organism that you choose. So ideally it's a Connecticut organism that you can see and observe and photograph and film, and you're going to make a documentary about that organism. There's going to be a list of questions that you have to answer. So you're going to be uh, doing research. You have to do a research project on the organism. There's a whole bunch of things you have to look up. You write that up. Then you can meanwhile take pictures, video of the organism. I have one online about a fungus because at the time I couldn't find the organism I wanted to in the wild and I gave up and then I, I did it on this because it, it's everywhere and it's really important. It's actually a really interesting organism. I just filmed a whole bunch of video on this click beetle and I'm going to make a documentary over the next few weeks that I'll post um, that you'll be able to see, something I'm making actually like right now. Um, and this will be an example of what I would want you to do. So you can just be taking photos for now, taking videos for now of some organism, but it's a particular, you know, it could be, could be a plant, could be an animal, it could be a fungi, uh, um, it could be a protease, but you'd have to do something microscopic, you know, to, to be able to video and uh, photograph it. But keep that in mind, that's going to be an optional project. It's worth 100 points total, and those five uh, lab worksheets are 20 points each, so that's 100 points. You can do one or the other, um, and it's clearly indicated which one's which and what you can do in the 
course shell and in the syllabus and all that. But I'm just trying to explain this to you now. So as the class begins, you have some idea what to expect, what you're going to have to do, and how to get prepared to, to do these things in the class. So it should be interesting because it is going to be not just online. The lecture is online. It's just straightforward. All the topics, quizzes, exam, more topics, more quizzes, more exams. It's very set. Okay. The lab is a little more dynamic where you're going to actually be doing research projects uh, for, for the most part. Um, and that's going to involve a little extra effort and work on your part. So uh, I'm going to be providing you with some materials, but you're going to have to get some of these things yourself and you need to get them as soon as you can so you can get started uh, with the lab part of the class.